God, I really need a smoke. Does anyone object? Guess not. Dead people rule. No time for that now. I'm late for the funeral. I haven't written anything in it yet. I'll write down clues in this as I find them. NZ-500 self-defense stun gun. Fully charged. A girl can never be too safe. My trusty Zippo. Running a bit low on fuel. There's a crude inscription, BH, which is a mystery to me. The only thing my deadbeat dad left me. My smoke's about a half a pack. Started when I was 12 and never looked back. Pretty much the only thing keeping me sane. Well, here we are. God, I really need a smoke. Does anyone object? Guess not. Dead people rule. No time for that now. I'm late for the funeral. I haven't written anything in it yet. I'll write down clues in this as I find them. NZ-500 self-defense stun gun. Fully charged. A girl can never be too safe. My trusty Zippo. Running a bit low on fuel. There's a crude inscription, BH, which is a mystery to me. The only thing my deadbeat dad left me. My smoke's about a half a pack. Started when I was 12 and never looked back. Pretty much the only thing keeping me sane. It says, Price. A family mausoleum. The family must have been fairly rich. Those things don't come cheap. No reason to go in there. We are gathered here today to honor a person of great integrity, a pillar of the community, and a decorated war hero. His name was Joseph Irving Rain. We all remember his warm heart his compassion, and his eagerness to help others. His passing while our loss is surely heaven's gain. Now we entrust our brother Joseph to God's mercy. We commit his body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, in sure and certain hope of the resurrection to eternal life through our Lord Jesus Christ, who will transform our frail bodies so they may be conformed to his glorious body, who died, was buried, and rose again for us. To him be glory forever. Amen. Oh, Kathy, you big baby, just talk to her. Mary Elizabeth Rain, my grandmother on my father's side. The coffin is lowered, but the grave hasn't been filled up yet. 
Rest in peace, Grandpa. I wish things could have been different. Uh, excuse me, Mrs. Rain? Have we met, Anne? You look strangely familiar. It's me. It's Catherine. Catherine who? You don't recognize me? I guess it's been a while. I might be a bit taller than you remember me. Kathy? Bless my soul. Look at you, all grown up. Oh, how I wish Joseph could see you now, finally coming home. Let's hope he can, wherever he is. A comforting thought, dear. Lord, how long has it been? Ten years? Fifteen? Fifteen sounds about right. I was six when Mom took me away. Goodness, we have some catching up to do then. <laughs> I want to know everything. Listen, I'm not quite ready to leave yet, but... Why don't you join me at the house in half an hour? Sure, I'd love to. I passed it on my way here. It shouldn't be too hard to find. I'll see you soon then. I'm so glad you found your way back home. I can't wait for us to have a chance to talk. Same here. See you in a bit. Mary Elizabeth Rain, my grandma... Conwell Springs looks smaller than I remember it. I never thought I'd return to this place. No reason to go in there. I'm sorry for your loss. Thanks. If you wish to find God, the Church of the Holy Trinity is always open to you. Is that so? Certainly. It's never too late to turn away from the path of sin. No sin, but what am I supposed to do for fun? Behind those words is a deep wound, a desire to belong. If you let him, Christ can fill that void. Oh, please don't make Christ fill my void. I'm totally not up for that. The crude facade of a lost soul. I'll pray for you. I wish you comfort in this time of grief. Grandma, anybody home? Cute red horse. It's some old Swedish thing, I think. This paint looks fresh. Grandma must have had this restored recently. Nice black leather coat, right up my alley. Nice black leather coat. A mere single pair of boots on display. Boy, do we live in different worlds. There's nothing quite like the soothing sound of rain falling on a window. A lamp on the ceiling, nothing special about it. Dog fighting. Grandpa used to love that stuff. An old wheelchair, not too dusty, probably used recently. Huh, never seen this around. Grandpa must have used it towards the end. These should come in handy when I need to make calls. Nah, I don't need to make any calls right now. It's a photo of this very farm from way back. It says June 12, 1910 in the corner. A wedding photo from when my grandparents married. They look younger than I am now. Things have sure changed. A small table lamp. Some kind of winter forest scene. I've always wondered if it's supposed to be Conwell Woods or not. I 
I shouldn't overstay my welcome. I shouldn't overstay my welcome. Oh, hello, dear. I was just wondering what took you so long. Sorry, I couldn't resist taking that old wheelchair for a spin. Oh, don't give me that look. I put it back. You haven't changed one bit. Always kidding around, just like when you were little. Come have a seat. We have so much to talk about. So, now, tell me about your life in the city. Oh, there's not much to tell. I'm going to school for journalism. It's my second year. I ride a motorcycle in case you missed it there out front. Ah, oh, that's right. Just like your father. Yeah, I suppose. I must ask, have you heard anything from your father? Anything at all? No, nothing since he bailed way back then. I expected as much. He disappeared without a trace. No matter, that's ancient history. How Sharon then? Mom is... I had her committed to a place where she could get some real help. I just couldn't take it anymore. I'm sorry to hear that. In spite of everything that happened when she took you away. Yeah, about that. I'm sorry I didn't visit sooner, Grandma. Mom, she told me all these horrible lies about you and Grandpa. When I was old enough to understand what she was doing, I felt like it was much too late. It wasn't your fault, dear. You were a child. I'm just happy that you're here now. Me too. So what about you? How have you been doing all these years? I've been lonely ever since the accident. There's no denying that. What accident? Goodness gracious. Of course you don't know. She took you away before it all happened. Don't know what? I will never forget that dreadful day. August 16th, 1981. It was the middle of the night when Sheriff Truman knocked on our door. He had Joseph with him. I couldn't even recognize Joseph at first. All dirty and wet with an awful blank stare on his face, like his soul had been ripped from his body. Since that day, he never spoke a word, forever confined to that blasted wheelchair. Really? For all this time? I had no idea. It came as a shock to all of us. That's horrible, Grandma. I'm so sorry. Thank you, dear. Why do you think Grandpa suddenly left that night in 81? I haven't the faintest idea. He acted very peculiar not long before it happened, disappearing for hours at a time. At first, I even suspected he was having an affair. When I asked him about it, he just said he was chasing old demons. He must have had something to do with the war. Maybe it was post-traumatic stress disorder? Grandpa always had a hard time showing weakness. I don't know, dear. I, I'm just speculating. I didn't think too much of it at the time. Joseph was a man of few words. I'm sure he just didn't wish to burden me with it, whatever it was. What do the doctors have to say about Grandpa's condition? Persistent vegetative state. That's what they call it. I've heard it all by now. One doctor said it was a stroke. Another claimed it was a seizure. The third hack tried to sell it off as a severe infection. It's all a load of tripe. I had an MRI performed on Joseph. It's one of those state-of-the-art head scans. Yeah, I've heard of them. Yes, well, according to the scan, his brain was completely intact. They thought it was a technical problem at the time, some kind of glitch. But the result was the same after three different scans on three different machines. Eventually, they had to confess that they simply had no credible explanation for the state he was in. Hmm. And this injury just happened to occur on the very same night he mysteriously disappears? Indeed. I refuse to believe it was a coincidence. What did Sheriff Truman have to say about the matter? Not much. He said, 
they simply found Joseph in that condition on the outskirts of town. The sheriff was convinced there was some kind of foul play involved, but the investigation turned up nothing. He later said that he was sorry, but that he was forced to close the case. You know, I could try to find out more about this. You're welcome to try, dear. Some kind of closure would mean the world to me. Okay, I think I'll head over to the sheriff's station for a little chat then. Would be nice to witness police doing some actual police service for once. Sure, you go ahead. Let me know if I can be of any more help. I don't want to show her that. 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 She'll just start worrying about me. I don't want to show her that. Bye, Grandma. I'll be back later. So long. Nice leather chair. Freckles, the old farm cat, used to love that thing. A robust piece of wooden furniture. I used to love digging through those drawers when I was a kid, looking for coins, buttons, and trinkets. Grandpa and me, we had this game where he would hide pennies around the house and I would go on a treasure hunt. Never in the attic, though. I thought it was too scary up there. Planes, planes, and more planes. Some woman dressed fancy. I'm not sure how I'm related to her, but she has my hair. That's my great-grandfather, Eric Wren. I never met him. They changed the spelling to Rain after he died, I think. Grandpa in his Air Force uniform looks to be in his early 20s. Planes, planes, and more planes. Planes, planes. There's nothing quite like the soothing sound. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? See you later, Grams. Take care, dear. Grandma has prepared some tea for us. Nah, I'm more of a coffee gal. A decent-sized book collection. Most of them science or history related from the looks of it. An intricate toy airplane with moving parts. I remember playing with that. Grandpa had a whole collection of them. I shouldn't overstay my... Not their peak hours, it seems. Land of the free. A medieval hey, fortress sure. near an ocean, probably supposed to be somewhere what in Europe. Bone? The one in the cell. Oh, I thought it was with you. Well, shit. Fax machines, the pinnacle of modern technology. A bunch of cops lining up for a photo. Various notices and a wanted poster. A medieval fortress near an ocean, probably. Lots of police reports organized alphabetically by the looks of it. I would, but I can't do that when he's right there. Maybe I can distract him somehow. If that cop's phone already? might be useful uh, somehow. Okay, I guess. Maybe halfway through. That's no good. We're gonna have to cancel lunch today. Again? Oh, man. Your motivation shouldn't be limited by your growling stomach, Lanny. <sighs> if you say so, boss. Might be something useful in there. I think he'd object. Some young cop. Looks a bit familiar. Hi. Hello. 
Do I have to commit a crime to get your attention? Because I seriously will. Ma'am, I'm really quite busy at the moment. Hey, wait. I know you. I'm pretty sure you don't. Yes, I do. You're Kathy. Kathy Rain. My reputation precedes me in a kind of but not totally creepy way. Aw, oh, come on. It's me, Lenny. Lenny Marks. I'm drawing a blank. Really? You don't remember us playing when we were little kids? Not really. Sorry, buddy. Darn. Well, that's a bummer. Anyway, what can I do for you today? I don't want to show him that. Yeah, that won't get me into trouble at all. I don't want to show him that. I wanted to ask if you know anything about my grandfather's accident. I really don't know much beyond the rumors. The sheriff may have more information, but even he probably doesn't know anything that isn't in the report. It happened before either of us worked here. Okay, I think I'll have a chat with the sheriff then. Sure thing. His office is to your right. Well, gotta go. See ya. Just some photo. I can't see it clearly from here. A gold medal of some kind. A photo of the sheriff shaking hands with some bald guy in a suit. Probably the mayor. It's always the mayor. That must be the sheriff. He looks grumpy. Hello, sheriff. Do you have a moment? Not really. Make it quick. Yeah, that won't get me into trouble. Do you know what happened to Joseph Rain in 81? He had a stroke in the woods, that's what happened. If that's all there is, why would Sheriff Truman open an investigation? It was just standard procedure. A general occurrence report always has to be filed. I see. Did you know him at all? No, I haven't been in town for long. Man sure has one hell of a reputation, though. It's been over a decade since he was put in that wheelchair, and people still talk about the man he used to be. It's like he was a cult leader or something. Sounds like a conspiracy theory to me. Could be, but you know what they say. Things too good to be true usually are. Could I have a look at that report? Absolutely not. They were official police documents. Why not? I thought filed police reports are public record. Not in this state, they ain't. Lenny, a little help here? Don't you agree that he's taking by the book too far? Well, uh, boss, she is his granddaughter, really. I don't think it's any... Don't you think I know that? There are rules. Am I the only one in here who cares about the law? Too much coffee? Try not to pop a vein. You want to see the inside of a cell? Oh, cuff me, officer. Spare me the torment of your rhetorical questions and veiled threats. Uh, just follow the rules like everyone else. I've had enough of this nonsense. Fine. Not sure where those doors lead. I should go check it out. Lanny, I need you to do something. How can I help us? It's my mother's birthday this weekend. You'll have to get on. If I ever feel the urge to clean, I'll know where to go. Huh, very funny. A jail cell. Looks cramped. Looks like an incarcerated bum. Hey. What? I can't hear you. What a tiny TV. Thanks. That was getting annoying. Hey. Hi there. So, why'd they put you in that cell? Uh, well, uh, it's all just a big misunderstanding. Is that so? 
Yeah, I, I didn't mean to steal anything. I was just using my pockets to move the beer to the checkout. That's the worst excuse I have ever heard. For your information, I happen to have a deadly fear of shopping carts. I take my last statement back. This excuse is even worse. Hey, it wasn't your father who was killed by a shopping cart when you were eight. Uh, I sure hope not. To be fair, mine wasn't either. It was just Uncle Bob. But that doesn't mean it was any less traumatic, mind you. To this day, I still get nervous breakdowns at grocery stores. I think I've heard enough, buddy. You're right. We should stop before the flashbacks begin. You need to keep the blonde cop out there busy for a while. I do? Ten bucks says you do. Hmm. I'd say my services in this matter are worth at least twenty bucks. Nine. Fifteen. Eight. Fine. Ten. Seven. <sighs> Deal. Good. So, uh, what am I doing again? Distract that young cop in the lobby. I don't care how you do it, as long as you keep him occupied for a while. Okay, then. Let me know when. Will do. No wanted posters. I'm disappointed. An axe, a sledgehammer, and some other heavy tools. Brilliant idea to leave those lying around next to evidence lockers and locked cells. Too heavy to carry around and too noisy to use in here without getting caught. Just a bunch of boxes filled with office supplies. A computer monitor. Probably recovered stolen goods. There's no way small town cops would be that up to date with the modern world. They look sturdy enough. Wouldn't be able to break them open without taking my time and making a lot of noise. If I ever need to find evidence, I'll know where to look. I'll need a key. Hey, the jail is off limits. You shouldn't be in there. Oh, sorry. I, I just heard someone yelling. Uh, I think that guy in the cell needs some help. Ah, oh, what now? Okay, I have to make this quick. Okay, let's have a look. Hmm, I'm going to have to get my hands on that recorder. Okay, let's find the key to locker number five. Got it. Hey, Sheriff, what's the deal with that bum? What bum? Hey. Hi there. Okay, gotta go. See ya. All right, got it. Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting closer to finding the source. I have a theory, but I need help. I'm gonna have to involve somebody else.
I don't have anything to say about that. Hey, uh, Kathy, wait. What? Do you eat foot? I, I mean, food? Absolutely not. I feed on human misery. I, uh... Relax, Lenny. Yes, I do eat food. Oh, well, great. Can I buy you food sometime? And also buy food for me? And, and then maybe we can eat the food together? I'm really busy right now. Maybe later. Oh, okay. See ya. I should probably ask. Oh, hello, dear. Mind if we talk for a bit, Grandma? Not at all, dear. What's on your mind? Would you mind if I took a look in the attic? I suppose it would do no harm. Come with me. Thanks, Grandma. You're welcome, dear. Be careful now. The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. Free light bulb? Score! The bulb looks burned out. I'll have to replace it. There we go. Mr. Bear! <laughs> How did you get all the way up there? Good idea. You just keep watch. I'll do the searching. Various books and office supplies. Nothing in particular catches the eye. Might be something useful in there. Empty. An old typewriter covered in cobwebs. A thick book about math. Just some old bills, nothing interesting. A worn office chair on wheels. I'm feeling a sudden urge to do a race. A leather briefcase sealed by a combination lock. Nope, that's not it.
What really happened to you that night, Grandpa? That combination makes no sense. Nope, that's not it. I must Not now Not now Hello, dear. Mind if we talk for... Not at all. I found a locked grief case in the attic. Do you know anything about it? Oh, that old thing? Joseph said there were just some old boring Air Force papers in there. If that was the case, why use an intricate combination lock? That's a very good question, dear. In any case, I wouldn't know how to open it. Hey, Grandma, do you recognize this tape recorder? Oh, yes, Mr. Dicto. Joseph used to carry that thing with him everywhere. He could be absent-minded at times. It helped him remember things. I found this book in the attic. Recognize it? Oh, yes. I bought it for Joseph's birthday once. He was always fascinated by numbers. He believed that math could explain everything in this world. He was a man of science. There's no denying that. I got the dictaphone already. I don't think there's anything else in there I need to mention to her. Well, gotta go, Graham. Bye, Kathy.
note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with every... Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has... Note to self. Remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting closer to finding the source. I have a theory, but I need help. I'm gonna have to involve somebody else. Nothing. It looks like someone was doing geometry. Note to self, remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. I just don't want her to worry. She has enough to think about with everything that's been going on lately. With Sharon and Kathy. Anyway, I'm getting closer to finding the source. I have a theory, but I need help. I'm gonna have to involve somebody else. Note to self, remember the perfect bouquet consists of three red roses, a blue violet, and two yellow tulips. I've been working on my research in the attic at night. Thick yellow envelope.
It's the envelope I found in the briefcase. Let's see what's in here. 